Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. I do pray it is well with your souls today. And uh, just a few announcements. I, I'm not going to go over all of them, but we, the nut sales are happening. So if you want nuts, order those. Uh, the rummage sale will be coming up soon. And uh, you can you know, start going through your stuff and seeing what you might be able to, to put there. Again, if there's things that you don't think are good enough for the rummage sale that should just be thrown out, we're going to have a big dumpster out here as well that will be here all week that you can bring those things to. Um, we got a good and plenty meal coming up here, and it's going to be a big one with all the turkey and fixings and stuff like that. Keep that in mind. And, you know, so there's just a few of those things, and Tom has an announcement for you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as you know, Christmas is coming. Whether it's coming faster than we'd like or not, uh, it's coming. And the Christmas cantata rehearsals will begin on Sunday, October 6th at 2 p.m. in the Celebration Center, just a few weeks away. So if you have sung with us in the past, public service announcement. If you know someone who uh, you think needs a little encouragement, a little push to get them to come and join us, please get that word out. Sunday, October 6th. Also, as a P public service announcement, you'll see the choir is here. We're singing an anthem today. We would love to have you join us on a regular basis. We rehearse Thursday evenings at 7.30. So hopefully we'll see you on Thursdays as well. And choir, welcome back. Welcome back. It's always good to have the choir. So those are some things for you to think about. Um, also, also consider that uh, nominations will be uh, looking to fill positions and, you know, just maybe pray about how can you uh, serve your, your church in the coming year. Now, my friends, I invite you to stand and pass the peace of Christ with the people right around you. And now as you make your way back to your seats, let us begin worship in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
Good morning. Good morning. Let us rise for the choral call to worship. Join in the opening hymn, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus.
Join with me in the prayer of the day. Bless us, O Lord, as we gather together. Bless the singing of your praises, the reading of your word, the sharing of our fellowship, and the prayers we trust into your care. May they all be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Amen. And now let us take our joys and our concerns to the Lord in silent prayer. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Let us join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare our tithes and our offerings this morning, we can think about this. Generous, generous living begins with money and possessions, but it applies to every area of our life.
Let us pray. Gracious God, I dedicate these gifts to your kingdom work and my life to you as a living sacrifice, bringing all my actions under the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, come and fill your temple. Amen. Please be seated. And if you would, would you join me in our prayer hymn, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Gracious God, we thank you for this day that we have gathered together. Lord, it is beautiful outside, and I think some of our brothers and sisters are enjoying that. There are some who are also not feeling well as sickness moves throughout our community. And we pray for those who are sick that you would grant them healing, and we look forward to seeing them very soon. For those, Lord, who may be out enjoying your creation, we pray that you be with them and that in all things they may see you, recognize you, and praise you. And Lord, may they think of us here this morning gathered together as we think and pray for them. Lord, we give you thanks for the many things in our lives. And there are so many things we have to, to do and think about. And we pray that you would guide us in in our ways that they may look like you lord that we may show grace to those who 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 are difficult to work with lord we pray that you would help us to be strong and courageous in in defending that which is right and good lord we pray that you would help us to have the ability to love others as you love us and Lord, where do we find these abilities? Well, certainly not within ourselves, but we lift up our eyes to the hills. From where does our help come? It comes from God, the maker of heaven and earth. And so we look to you, Lord, whether it's to the hills and the mountains or whether it's, it's to the cross. Lord, we find your presence in these places. And we ask that you would be with us and guard us and, and help us in our daily walk to stay on that straight and narrow path. And all of this we ask in the name of Jesus, who is our healer and our savior. Amen.
Thank you, choir, and welcome back. It's so good to have you here. Let us join in prayer. Shower us with the light of your word, O Lord, that we may see the way to heaven. Amen. The scriptures today, first from Psalm 33, verse 4. For the word of the Lord is right and true, and all his work is done in faithfulness. And from Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. And from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7, Jesus taught, Not everyone... Oh, I'm sorry. Everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell, and great was its fall. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. Thy a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I was a kid, one of my favorite toys was this, the gyroscope. And one of the things I loved about a gyroscope was the way it seemed to defy gravity. And no matter how I moved myself, it would stay in place and keep spinning. And as long as that kept spinning at a fast rate of speed, the gyroscope itself would stay in place, and I could uh, do many tricks with it. But the gyroscope, as I said, has this seeming ability to defy gravity, which, but I later learned that um, <clears throat> it's a result of angular momentum and gyroscopic movement. Now, I'm no physicist, and I don't know a whole lot about this, but as best as I can understand, as long as the gyroscope maintains its spinning motion and, and constant state, it will, if it starts out vertical, it will remain vertical. No matter how the frame is moved. And the gyroscopic motion will cause it to resist any change to its orientation. So there's some, <clears throat> some sciencey stuff going on there. But you know, the gyroscope isn't just a toy or just a neat science experiment. They are used in many 
uh, mechanical things we use each day. One simple thing is, example, is the bicycle. As the wheels spin on a bicycle, they act like a gyroscope. And the faster the wheels spin, the more stable the bike becomes. That's why it's easier to balance a bicycle in motion than it is standing still. Uh, gyroscopes are also found in your smartphones and your tablets and gaming devices. They're in drones and they, that's what keeps a Segway upright when you're riding one of those. Uh, gyroscopes are also found in camera stabilizers and uh, in navigational systems of ships and submarines. They're found on miss missiles and satellites, the Hubble Space Telescope. The Mir Space Station has 11 gyroscopes that keep it oriented to the sun. And they're also used in aviation. When I was in seminary, our seminary president was addressing the student body one day, and he told us that he was a licensed pilot. And one of the things he shared with us was, when you're first starting to learn how to fly, that instrument panel and all of those instruments and gauges can be very intimidating. But as you learn what each one does, they become your friends. Now, there was one instrument, however, that he said never really meant much to him when he was first learning to fly. And that's because uh, he either had an instructor with him in the plane or it was a bright sunny day and he could see forever. But one, of his, but one day his, his teacher instructed him to go higher, you know, to a higher elevation, which took him into the clouds. And in that moment, he realized how important that instrument was. And that instrument was the artificial horizon. The artificial horizon is operated by a gyroscope and is attached to gimbals to the, of the, the, the plane. The gyroscope remains fixed in space um, while the, the plane's frame goes from left to right or up or down, and the gyroscope remains oriented and level with the Earth's horizon thanks to that, that, that angular momentum and gyroscopic motion. Now on this gauge, the blue upper part represents the sky, the brown lower part represents the ground. That white line in the middle of the brown and blue is the horizon line and those orange wings represent the plane as it is in relation to the horizon. This man is Jimmy Doolittle. Jimmy was an American military general and aviation pioneer. And on September 29th, or I'm sorry, September 25th, 1929, Jimmy tested the first artificial horizon in a 15 minute blind test. What they did was they put a canvas hood over his cockpit so he couldn't see. And he took off, flew, and landed successfully blind and essentially changing aviation and making it much, much more safer. So why an artificial horizon? Well, when flying on a clear day when you can see the horizon or a light in the distance, flying is made easy. However, if you fly into a fog bank or you go up into the clouds, now you can't see uh, anything. And my, my seminary professor said, flying in the clouds is unlike anything you will ever do. Now, how many of you have driven your car through the fog? Yeah. And in the fog, though, on, in your car, you can still, still tell up and down. But apparently when you're flying, that's not true. It's, this is called spatial disorientation. Some pilots think they're turning left when in fact they're turning right. Some of them will swear they are going up when the reality is they are nosediving toward the earth. It can even happen on a clear night over the ocean. If the water is calm, the stars and the planets and the moon will reflect in that water like a mirror, making it almost impossible to, to tell the sky from the water until it is too late. Spatial disorientation. 
This is what they believe happened with John Kennedy Jr. in 1999. When you're learning to fly, there are two flight instruction certifications. One is the visual flight regulation training, and the other is the instrument flight regulation training. Only 54% of pilots are trained to use their instruments. Kennedy was a very good pilot, but on that day, they believed that he was, as he was flying along the Atlantic coast, he flew into a fog bank and found himself unable to see. And being not trained in instruments, he became disoriented and crashed into the water. The only way to safely fly in such conditions is to trust your instruments. The artificial horizon can keep a plane straight even when you can't see and tell where you are. Now, what they say is the hardest part of earning that instrument flight regulation training is learning to have unwavering faith, unwavering faith in the instruments. You must trust them even if your eyes and head are telling you something else. You must trust wholeheartedly in those gauges. Life can be cloudy at times, can't it? There are so many aspects of life and so many things to make decisions about that we're not all trained in. Some people like to make life seem like it's black and white. They like to make it seem like, well, this is, you know, there's this way over here and then there's this way and nothing else. But that's not true. Life is filled with a lot of gray. Decisions can be difficult to make at times, and we get confused, we can get messed up, we don't know which way to go, we can't tell right from wrong. And so what do we do in situations like that? Well, we need to refer to our artificial horizon, the Bible. If you hold this up, it looks like the wings of that plane out there on that artificial horizon. But we need to read this, but not just read it, my friends, we need to study it, we need to learn it, and we need to trust in it wholeheartedly. Because there are going to be times when we don't know where we're going, when we don't know what decision to make. And there are going to be people who are going to try to steer us wrong, who will intentionally try to lead us in the wrong direction, and they'll really cloud things up. And tell us lies like, oh, you can't get addicted to heroin the first time. Or, it's just a quiz. It's not like it's cheating or anything. Or, go ahead, take that money from the company. You're only borrowing it. You can pay it back later. Everyone else is doing it. And if it feels good, then just do it. And my goodness, today, especially in this political climate that we're in, anything on Facebook or the Internet how can you trust any of it? The AI images, the photos that are being made, you can't tell if it's real or not. And articles are being published as if they're coming out from news agencies, but they're just satire things. And people don't know the difference. You see, things can get real foggy real quick, and, and you're not sure which way is right. Am I going left or am I going right? Am I going up? Am I going down? As I said earlier, in flight, they refer to this as spatial disorientation. In faith, I think we could call it spiritual disorientation. As we are flying, you know, are we flying right side up or are we upside down? And we can't trust the world's horizon because the world is often flying upside down. How many times did Jesus, you know, turn the world upside down, or as I like to say, right side up, because it was flying upside down. You know, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. If someone hits you on the right cheek, give them your left cheek. If you want to be a leader, you must be a servant. These are all upside down from what the world teaches, what that world horizon is showing us. And we need to learn the difference. So how do we trust our artificial horizon, the Bible? Or we have to trust it. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord and lean not. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge God and he will make your path straight. Psalm 33, 4. For the word of the Lord 
This is right, and it is true. It is right and true. Friends, Satan wants us to fly disoriented. He wants us flying blind. And so we must trust our artificial horizon. No matter how much we want to turn the other way, no matter how much our feelings are telling us something, we must trust in God's artificial horizon. We must trust in his word wholeheartedly. It's the only thing that will keep us on the straight and narrow. Unfortunately, too many people don't know the Bible well enough. They don't know its teachings. They rely, and so they rely on their own understanding, their own instinct of things. They think they're going up on the way to heaven, but in reality, they're flying down toward hell. And I believe that's what Jesus was constantly trying to tell the Pharisees. I mean, the Pharisees thought they had everything figured out, and he was always challenging them. He was always tw- you know, turning their words against them because they weren't right. They were leaning on their own understanding and not necessarily on God's word. They thought they were flying straight, but they were actually upside down. And Jesus was turning them right side up. In Matthew 7, 24 to 27, Jesus taught this truth. Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. The rain came down, the storms rose, and the wind blew and beat against that house. Yet they did not, it did not fall because it had been built upon the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. Let me retranslate that into the context of today's theme. Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise pilot who trusts in his artificial horizon. The rains came down, the fog set in, the winds blew and beat against the plane, yet it did not fall because the pilot trusted in his artificial horizon. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put, their, put them into practice is like a foolish pilot who trusts only in his own instinct. The rains came down, the fog set in, the winds blew and beat against the plain, and it fell with a great crash. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not, lean not on your own understandings. To fly safely through this life and reach our desired destination, it comes down to trust. Who are you trusting in? For we're all trusting in someone or something, whether it's our bank account or our job. We may be trusting in our spouse or our family. We may be trusting in our education or our own instinct. We may even be trusting in the government. But we're all trusting in something or someone. Who are you trusting in? God says to trust in him and not on your own understandings of the things of the world, but he will, and he will lead you down the straight path. Trust in the Lord. It's interesting that that phrase in the psalm and in Proverbs, trust in the Lord, in every translation the word Lord is spelled in capital letters. And that's because it's referring to the divine, the sacred divine name of the one and only true God, Yahweh. But they felt that the name was too sacred to speak or even to write. And so they, every place Yahweh's name was, they put Lord in capital letters. Later they would use the word Adonai, which means my Lord. But the idea is that we need the trust in the one true God, the God of all creation, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who perfectly revealed himself through Christ, the Lord, the word of God, who in the beginning was with God and was God. This Christ is God, and this is his word. And in his word, we are to set our eyes and trust to see us through to our eternal horizon. 
For the word of the Lord, it is right and it is true and it'll keep us level and on, on our path. Amen and amen. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you for your word. Help us to trust in it. It's not always easy for our feelings and our intuition will tell us one thing. The world is telling us something. And it's easy for us to get upside down. But if we trust in your word wholeheartedly, and Lord, we stay in it, and we don't just read it, but we, we study it to understand the context and understand the history and, and how to properly apply it to life situations, it will keep us on that straight and narrow. It will keep us aflight and, and keep us safe in you. So give us that, that understanding and that desire to know your word and keep it always in our sights. This we ask in your holy name. Amen. <clears throat> All week as I was writing this sermon, I had a song. It was just in my head. And I hadn't thought about this song in decades. But it's a song that I remember from Sunday school. It's a song I remember from revival meetings and stuff like that. And it's a simple song, but it's a song called, I Just Keep Trusting My Lord. And that's what we need to do. We need to trust in, in, in our Lord to see us through. So if you would stand and join me in our closing hymn. Keep trusting my Lord as I walk along. I just keep trusting my Lord as He gives a song. Though the storm clouds darken the sky or the heavenly tread, I just keep trusting my Lord. He will never fail. He's a faithful friend. Such a faithful friend, I can count on him to the very end. Though the sun clouds darken the sky or the heavenly trail, I just keep trusting my Lord, he will never fail. I just keep trusting my Lord on the narrow Trusting my Lord as he leads each day. Though the road is weary at times and sad and blue, I just keep trusting my Lord, he will see me through. He's a faithful guide, such a faithful guide. He is always there. Walking by my side, though the road is weary at times and I'm sad and blue, I just keep trusting my Lord, He will see me through. My friends, as you leave here, just keep trusting your Lord. Just keep trusting the Lord, He will see you through. And keep your eyes on that artificial horizon. Stay in the word of God and you will stay on the right path. Now go in peace and lovingly serve one another. Amen.